Good afternoon, everyone. I have to admit that I'm not so few, and therefore I'm going to present this work, which is works that are being done by an MSc student in Egerton. and the student is being supervised by Professor Kahi and myself. It is part of the ongoing characterization study of the indigenous chicken in Kenya, and in this case we are looking at the genetics of feed use efficiency in this chicken. This is the introduction where we are looking at indigenous chicken as being popular farm species in developing countries and in Kenya it presents about 77% of the total poultry population. These birds are important economically, nutritionally and also for sociocultural aspects of life of both urbanites and rural dwellers. It's important to note that majority of indigenous chicken are raised under the extensive system which is faced by challenges such as poor genetic profiles, nutritional deficiencies, disease outbreaks and predation. These challenges contribute partly to low productivity of these birds and high mortality rates that are recorded in these systems. However, these challenges notwithstanding, raising indigenous chicken are preferred to exotic birds due to the low cost of production and the adaptability to scavenging conditions and tropical environments. However, nutrient concentration of scavenged feed resources that are consumed by these birds are below the recommended levels for optimal performance. And studies have shown that improved performance of indigenous chicken could be attained under intensive management where supplemental feeding is provided. This indicates that these birds have potential for improved performance, although this is suppressed by the inferior production environment that these birds are subjected to. Therefore, most producers have tried to intensify production and focused on selection programs that aim at increasing productivity. We have not done any deliberate, made any deliberate decisions to try and improve the feed intake or feed utilization characteristics of these birds at genetic level. You may notice that feed intake has a positive correlation to production. An animal that takes in more tends also to grow more and also produce more. It is therefore expected that improvement on growth rate will be accompanied by increased feed intake. But truly, is this what we really want? Given that feeding constitutes a major cost component of our production system, this question in mind leads us to profitability aspects of any given production system. Therefore, it would be important to consider feed efficiency as a functional trait alongside production traits in a breeding program. And this is because efficiency affects feed cost markedly, with directly, which is directly reflected on production costs. We measure feed efficiency in terms of how much sellable product is produced for each unit of feed consumed. It can be expressed either as gross feed efficiency or net feed efficiency. Where, when we talk of gross feed efficiency, it is the efficiency of how the total feed consumed is directed towards production and it is normally measured in terms of feed conversion ratio. It has been extensively used in various livestock industries to express the efficiency of feed utilization. However, with these gross feed efficiency measures, 
the partitioning of energy into portions that are needed to support the various functions such as production and maintenance is not given prominence. And that is the reason why net feed efficiency is important. And what it simply means is the feed that is used after accounting for all the requirements for production and maintenance. We measure net feed efficiency as residual feed intake, residual body weight gain, and residual intake end gain. So residual feed intake is normally given as a difference between the actual feed intake and that predicted on the basis of the requirements for production and maintenance. It has an advantage in that it's heritable and it is independent of body weight and weight gain. This implies that when we improve residual feed intake, we may not affect production. However, the lack of correlation between residual feed intake and weight gain could result in animals with slow growth ranking as efficient feed users. Residual body weight gain is given as the difference between the actual weight gain and that predicted on the basis of daily feed intake and maintenance requirements. Improved residual gain is on average associated with faster growth rates but also independent of feed intake. This lack of correlation between residual gain and feed intake could also result in a similar situation that we have observed in residual feed intake. To minimize some of these challenges, residual feed intake and residual gain have been combined in a linear function to form residual intake and gain. The purpose of this is to identify animals that are feed efficient and fast growing while still being independent of maintenance requirements. Therefore, the basis of this study is to assess the genetic variability of net feed use efficiency in indigenous chicken in Kenya. And we have three objectives that we are going to look at, which include comparison of mean residual feed intake, residual weight gain, and residual intake and gain within the indigenous chicken flow. We are also going to estimate the variance components, genetic and phenotypic parameters for net feed efficiency, as well as to determine the genetic and phenotypic correlation, relationships for, between net feed efficiency traits and growth characteristics. These are the hypotheses that have been postulated, one being there is no difference in mean residual feed intake, residual gain and residual intake and weight gain within the indigenous flock, and that there is no difference in estimates or variance component of net feed efficiency traits within the chicken flock, and lastly, there have been no genetic and phenotypic relationship between the traits of concern. This work is going to be done at the INSEED Research Unit in Igat, and this experimental flow and netting design will be as follows. Generation 1 of ch in chicken existing at the INSEED Research Unit will be used as parent stock to produce the experimental flow. To this, they will be selected based on growth performance, resulting to 54 adult birds comprising of normal feather naked neck genotypes from cluster 1 and 2. And one thing that is that should be noted is these clusters are as groupings developed by Neno. A mating ratio of 1 male to 5 females is going to be adopted. This will result in 9 sire families six sire families from normal feather genotypes and three sire families from the naked neck genotypes. Eggs will be collected daily for a period of four weeks and identified by their sire family. A total of 600 eggs is expected.
for artificial incubation with a heritability of about 60% estimated. We expect that the result, we shall have a result of 360 chicks. For data collection, each normal feathered sire will be represented by 10 progenies, while each naked neck sire will be represented by 20 progenies. This will result in 120 offspring being used as experimental flocks selected based on growth performance from hatch to date, from hatch date to week seven of age. In terms of management, at height the chicks will be weighed, we intact and allocated a number identifying the cluster, the genotype, and the cyan family. Artificial brooding will be done in a deep litter brooder using infrared bulbs. Diets will be as uh, the command will use commercial diets on the market and while clean water will be provided at the bitter. Health management will also follow routine procedures as described and as practiced in the market. As far as data collection is concerned, the growth data will include weight measures that are taken at hatch and thereafter on a weekly basis after 20th week of age. This will result in each bird having 20 body weight records. For feed intake, we shall consider feed intake of individual birds. Therefore, birds will be transferred to individual cages at the age of 8 weeks where their feed intake is going to be monitored. The feed intake experiment will proceed from the 8th week to the 20th week of age, which corresponds to the rapid growth phase of the birds looking at the sigmoid growth curve. Individual daily feed intake will be measured as the difference between the feed supplied and the leftovers after every 24 hours. At the start of the trial, the birds will be supplied with measured ad libitum feed and thereafter, the feed will be supplied based on the amount left by each bird on previous test day. How will net feed efficiency be determined? The study will consider feed intake, average daily gain, and metabolic body weight as components of the net feed efficiency. Weekly body weights will be regressed on time using the non-linear growth curve as defined by compass laid function. This is to normalize each bird's growth curve to avoid short-term fluctuations in weight due to temporary environmental effects. The growth curve parameters will then be obtained using the nonlinear procedures of SARS. Residual feed intake will be computed as the difference between the observed feed intake and the expected feed intake. Residual weight gain will be computed as the difference between the observed weight gain and the expected weight gain, while the residual intake and gain will be computed as the difference between the residual feed intake and residual gain. This is the model that is going to define residual feed intake. This model defines residual gain in terms of average daily gain and metabolic body weight. This is the model that defines the residual intake and gain. And then comparison of the net feed efficiency traits within the indigenous chicken flow, flock. The effect, we are going to fit the effect of the cluster, the heart group, the genotype, the sex, and their first order interactions on feed efficiency. We are going to use the generalized linear procedures of SARS to be able to determine the influence of these effects on the parameters of concern, which are residual feed intake, residual gain, and residual intake and gain. This is the model description 
where we have our mean, the effect of cluster, the height, the genotype, and the sex of the birds. The second objective was on variance component estimation. We are going to use a univariate random regression sire model, which will be fitted on the data. This will achieve by using the restricted maximum likelihood procedure using Wombat software. And in so doing, we are going to use the mixed uh, estimation maximization procedures to be able to determine the genetic parameters. So, out of the analysis, we expect to get heritability estimates and estimates of phenotypic correlation between the repeated records. This is the model that is the random regression model that we are going to use, where Y is the record of the particular trade taken on the bird. F is the set of fixed effects which will be found to be significant in the fixed effect analysis. And then we are going to have the random regression of the sire, the permanent environment, and the common environmental effect because most of these parts during the early phase of growth they will graze together. To determine genetic and phenotypic relationship between the net feed efficiency traits and growth traits, we are going to use a multivariate random regression ceremony. And in this case, still we are going to use the restricted maximum likelihood procedure, and this will be fitted within the Wombat program. This is the matrix notation of the multivariate model with the effects described similar to those given in the univariate model. At the end of it all, we expect that the most feed efficient birds within the indigenous block will be determined, and that the estimates of genetic and phenotypic parameters for net feed efficiency of indigenous birds will be given, as well as a master species for this student in question, as well as conference publications and peer publications in conferences and peer review journals. Thank you very much.